Someone the other day said that my hair looked so beautiful when I first woke up. I, I, I just wanted to let you know how absolutely beautiful I looked this morning. I'm so tired, y'all. I've been so sick. My husband has been so sick. Um, it's not been like anything but like a like a creepy cred cold. Um, so we've treated it like a creepy creepy cred cold. But because the dry, super dry temps in Tennessee have inflamed my jaw and my mastering, which is looking really good today, my dad. I was really swollen the last few days and couldn't hardly move my jaw yesterday. Um, the dry, and I mean, I have multiple humidifiers and vaporizers in this house, and the, you hear, I sound like a man today. <laughs> Moo, I sound like a, I sound like a steer or a bull instead of a cow. Um, but the dryness in this freaking sub -zero, I don't know when I moved to Canada, but apparently I did. Um, it's absolutely been killing me. And look at my hair. <laughs> Somebody said, your hair looks so good when you first get up. I'm your pride of Tina. Yeah, I'm Tina. Um, God. Uh, but this stupid dryness really aggravates my RSD, which, as you all know, is a super heinous inflammatory disorder, basically. Um, so everything that didn't like me swelled up, <laughs> which is basically my entire body at this point. Um, and so I've just... Um, Honestly, where I have RSD, uh, the only other really bad symptoms I had to deal with because my body hurt so bad on a daily anyway was the the nasal pressure. The nasal pressure. And the swelling up here, which was not pleasant. <clears throat> but my poor husband has had it way worse than me. <laughs> like, he was, like, right at pneumonia. And ba they basically told me act like you have pneumonia because it's basically there. He never gets sick. But I'm here to tell you, he's had to wear those mother freaking masks for the last couple years at work. I'm here to tell you, those are killing people's lungs. You're rebreathing shit that's not supposed to go back to your body. And I'm sorry, there's no nice way to say that. Um, and he has had more sickness since they implemented all of that crap at work than he's, than he's had the whole 20 years we've been married. So, um, yeah, and yeah, we have insurance, but it, it, right now, I just feel like I'm being, like, passed around by bill collectors, um, because the astronomical amount of money they're wanting <laughs> between the kidney stone that David had and now his doctor visits, we have insurance, and it, you can go to the doctor with no insurance for $85 a visit at, at where my PCP is. With my husband's insurance, after it pays, his copay is still $97. How is it more expensive when you have insurance to go to the doctor than if you don't have insurance? Um, so at this point, I'm just like, what's crap, man? What, what's crap? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm letting all the bills go through and I'm making sure all the, all the different departments have billed and then I'm gonna raise absolute heck. It's what I do. Um, I'm really irritated at our at our healthcare system at the people that are like me that are trapped in this this little middle class bubble where you're not poor enough for benefits, but you're not rich enough to afford anything. And they just it, it's it's just you can't survive. You like we've racked up like seven thousand dollars worth of debt in medical bills in the last month, and it's like. I have insurance that I pay about $12,000 a year for before it really starts to work. And he had his kidney stone, if you know, at the end of last year. And we still had over $5,000 billed to us after they billed our insurance. Two bags of fluid, a pressure bag, one CT, and a dose of Toradol. I just have so many questions. I don't have questions. I have so many mother... Two hours later what I have because I just feel like I'm being taken advantage of and they're like oh well this is this is somebody that's in the class of people that can't get any aid and can't get any um like repayment stability options so let's just nail them to the cross 
And I'm like, bitch, I didn't bring a cross with me today. You know, I'm busy. I, I bring it every other day, but I didn't think I needed one at the hospital. Um, so I'm just really irritated right now with everything. Um, my husband's super stressed out. He's trying to not go back to the doctor, even though I think he, I think he needs to go back and get another round of injections. He's trying to not go back to the doctor and just kind of get, keep moving and keep his lungs clearing out. He's been taking, he's taken all of his course of antibiotics. Now he's going back to, um, the oil of oregano to help clear, um, his respiratory system and it's, you know, in his, in his other supplements, but it's just like, you should not you should not be sick and have to fear going to the doctor and that's not even the labs that we're going to get back we're going to we're going to have a couple three hundred dollars in labs easy by the time they they bill us oh and by the way they gave him okay on monday at the fast paced clinic because he was so sick i said just go and our doctor couldn't get him until wednesday it's a pandemic my ass um our doctor couldn't get him until wednesday so they i said just go to the fast paced clinic and get some antibiotics in your system if you're noticing what these are this is a splint so my joint doesn't fall out age is not being kind to me with RSD and Ehlers Danos but anyway um I said just go just pay it I don't freaking care you need to be healthy and um, go get some antibiotics in you it's worth it so I went and they started some antibiotics on him and uh, they did a rapid COVID test that came up negative and they said you've got the creepy crud um and I just think it's from the mask wearing. But so he comes home. We finally, he makes the appointment for our physician Wednesday, which we trust a little bit more because we've been with them longer. And I said, go because you're still not doing well. He went. They said, well, we want to retest you and not do a rapid one. We want to send it off in case you're sick so we know we can treat you. And I'm like, great. If he's got something other than just a creepy crud, great. Let's get some other crap into him if you're brave enough to prescribe anything. Um... So he got the, the test Wednesday. Do you know that as of Monday at 921, we still do not have an answer. So I would like to think that if this was a pandemic, things would run a little bit more smoothly. Lab companies would get stuff back even to rural areas because you know everyone should be treated similarly in the event of a pandemic, right? right so i'm gonna pay probably a hundred dollars for a test that was basically useless because by the time he got it back and um, thank god he had vacation time to bank but by the time he got it back which he's only taking half of it because he doesn't want to use all his vacation time but in case he gets sick again so we're going to go without like we're going to go with like half a check and then the rest of it's just going to pay for insurance to keep us current so basically no money but by the time we would give get, gotten this test back, if they have the answer for him today, if they don't, he still can't go to work. His employer won't let him go back to the door. Um, this has cost us so much money. And no one seems to be in a very urgent mood except for me. I need to light some fires. I made a double dose of Earl Grey tea this morning because I need help. But y'all, I'm just saying, there's something screwball about this. Now, we have insurance, but it pays nothing. It's done shit for us. I'm just going to say it. It's just nothing. I'm so frustrated. So mad. I'm, I am, mm, the vocabulary I'm going to exhibit on the day I call my insurance company is going to be such a behemoth monstrosity. I probably should record it. But my son is also sick. And he's not been around us in a long while, so everybody in this community is just sick. It's been super blast of dry, cold, nasty air, slot of snow, a lot, a lot, a lot of snow. And um, when we're a small community, and when one person gets something, it gets passed around because we're a super small community. Everybody's been sick. Um, so my son's sick too. Luckily, his wife is not sick. Thank the good Lord for that. And he feels like hammer crap. He has no insurance because he's a, he's a small business owner, very young, trying to get himself planted and started. So he's trying to basically just go to the fast paced clinic and just get, you know, a few antibiotics to get through this. And he's not doing well at all. And I'm more worried about my son at this point. My daughter seems to be immune to everything. I must have given her my immune system because since I had children, I've just been crap. I'm just telling you, it's crap. But this has been an experience. And for all the urgency that I see on the televisions and, and everything, like really honestly, even if they had gotten it back, the only thing it would have confirmed is that he needed the days off from work, which he took anyway. Um, 
but the only thing that they normally tell you is, well, if you get really sick, go to the ER. I'll be lucky to get my husband to see the ER ever again with the way that they bill raped him this last time. I mean, I'm just honest. He's one of those men that will go to his grave holding a grudge because he'll be like, I ain't giving you crap. <laughs> and he will not ever go again. So I'm just, I'm... I want to know how people live and have their nails done and wear designer clothes and drive brand new cars and live in houses that cost five times what they make annually and don't have insurance but somehow get state supplemental insurance and get all these benefits and look like they're a freaking rock star and I am here pinching pennies after working my butt to the bone, literally becoming disabled in the process of me working such horrible, brutal jobs in the corrections field. I think it's just because they know I have a heart to where I don't like to owe a debt and they know that I will eventually pay. So they're just like, oh, just hang it on that one. But that one over there, that one, she probably will pay. Just write that one off. I really think that's what they do at this point. I'm really irritated with everything this morning. But I will be in a better room this evening, I hope. And I'm hoping to be online this evening if I still have a voice and can talk. Um, right now, I'm fixing to dose up <laughs> and feel better. And uh, I'm going to try to catch a nap at some point today. But I am about four or five days behind my husband on this sickness but it's not it's staying in my head it's not going to my chest um and because my body hurts so bad on a daily and i'm used to it i don't really feel anything additional except for the sinus pressure and the swelling which is down so good it just looks so much better today but um i've not even really had a fever i've not even had a fever it's just i think it's just this dead gum winter weather that has walloped us um, and we're a small community that touches all the same doorknobs. We might as well lick them at this point and just get it all over with. <laughs> but I am on the mend so I'm going to be trying to get in touch with Ron again about setting that up um, because it needs to be done because his album's coming out and so I'm, I'm hoping to talk a little bit about that this evening and be on to do a catch up live and um, so if I feel better, you will see me. If not, y'all know I'm still kicking. Today's a better day. My husband is actually um, out trying to get the paperwork he needs to go back to work. I mean, well, we've only paid like $500 in medical bills. It's not like they need to rush to get us things we need so we can go back to work to make money. There are some people I just really like to put a pole straight up their ass right now. Fly them like a flag in my front yard and wave at them until they decay off the post. I am just that irritated. <sighs> my redneck showing today. And on top of that, Oscar's being super needy. I see you this evening, hopefully. Mama is out.